Welcome back to The Book Authority, our show to help you become more successful and have more fun with your writing, publishing, and marketing your books. Our Book Authority of the Week is Baja. He's written a book, uh, several books, and, but he's an artist and an author, and we'll be talking about how he does all that. Baja, thank you for being my Book Authority thank of the Week. Thank you very much for having me here. My pleasure. Welcome. To writing. I just, I, I find it, I, I write much differently than I speak. Okay. And the writing, my writing tends to be more formal in the way I speak. Okay. But it just amazes me, again, that you, you were able to write this in a length of time. Uh, but because when you learn the language, you, you learn yes. how to create formal sentences. Uh, and, but the, the colloquial language is something that really helps to sell a book. Yes. Did you, how did you bring that into the, the writing? Well, I had problem with slang, American slang. Actually, American slang... Like Americans do, too. <laughs> yes. American slang was the hardest part because I'm not born here. Yet... We are bombarded with American slang all over the media. Yes. So I was just listening and absorbing each phrase. And then I will ask my friends, what does it mean? My American friends, of course. And the best part what I did is I never went to the ghetto, Yugoslavian, let's say, ghetto. That actually was crucial. I actually integrate completely with the American community. And I said, this is uh, learning the English for free. I saved a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. 60 bucks last Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I said, okay, let me go with Americans and I learn the language and I write later. And I think that was uh, the best thing I did. Good. When you write your, your story, it, is, it, uh, is it important to always write it chronologically? Or? No. I write, for instance, I write whatever uh, comes to my mind at that moment. And then I, uh, when I finish, let's say, uh, a chapter, I go to the next chapter, and at the end, I read it to myself uh, loud, because that way I think you can um, uh, get um, the problem with the writing. Actually, you can recognize the problem in your writing when you read it loud to yourself, I think. And then, 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 then the next phase is to re reorganize the chapters. But since it's nonfiction, true story, yeah. it was very it was very easy to do it because you start. I started from United States as a as a flashback, and then and I came back in United oh, States. Okay. Yes. It was not hard because it's my own story. That's interesting. Th that's and I don't lie like the guy from uh, Million Pieces, the oh, opera, yeah. whatever. I don't lie. That's this is really true story. That's, that's it's true. not a fiction. Yeah, that's true. That that is a, a problem too. Yes. But usually a flashback is a, is a fiction. Tool, it's, it's a yes. technique. Yes, yes, it is. You yes. use nonfiction too. Yes, right? because I wanted to create um, uh, so-called today these days creative nonfiction. I did. I didn't want to write a book that is a, just a dry technical nonfiction. I wanted to write a creative nonfiction which going to lead me to the next project, a fiction book. And my uh, and uh, and all, and also my idols are all American writers. So I want to be like, let's say, the next Nabokov or something like that, because he was not born in this <laughs> yeah. country, and he learned English like myself and started writing. Sure. So that's my idol. It's John, not normal. Not Grisham? Not Grisham, J uh, even though he was lower. But I like his work, of course. I love m a lot of writers, but uh, my type of writers are a little bit um, uh, more philosophically deep writers, or writers, that have, that, uh, writers who have a strong message. For instance, I love uh, Truman Capote, older ones, uh, Fitzgerald. I love, um, uh, and of course, number one is Salinger. Salinger. I love Salinger. I would, I would do anything to meet this guy. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's he lives in like Connecticut, isn't that's not, uh, I thought it was New Hampshire. But uh, New Hampshire. Yeah, right. I gotta go to New Hampshire. <laughs> that's not that Look far. Look for him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not that far. I love Salinger. Yeah. Great. Actually, there's an article in the paper yesterday about, about him. It's phenomenal, yeah. I think. Let's, let's talk a little bit about, yeah. about damages again, uh, particularly okay. the, the concept about translations. Yes. And, and having it, because I know you had an agent at one yes. point. Yes. And he had it translated into Yugoslavian? Or? Well, this, this book was written by, <coughs> by myself, no translations in American English, as I said before. This is the translation that I actually, this is the book that I published in Bulgaria, was accepted uh, through my New York agent and 2,000 copies there. So this was my first translation of my book. But it's very funny because I am from that area, very close, so I, I came to write in American English and so then translated in my, oh, that was fun. Fun. crazy. That's great. But it's okay. I'm American now, so yeah. it's not a big deal. So you're a naturalized citizen. Sure. Yeah. 
I'm very independent, so I think I'm very American. <laughs> <laughs> very good.